<sighs> I'm a fan of Scooby-Doo. Hi, welcome back to your new favorite channel on YouTube. I just kind of wanted to start talking about things that I liked and, and, and you know, Scooby-Doo is one of those things that has always really sat in the forefront of my mind as something that really, that, that really shaped who I am and a lot of my humor. And I know I say that about a lot of stuff that I cover on this channel. But I just like talking about things that I like. Like, uh, you can't fault a guy for that, you know? But Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? is an animated series created by Hanna-Barbera in the 1960s. And honestly, I'm not gonna dive too far into the history of Scooby-Doo, because if you know what Scooby-Doo is, you clicked on this video. So you don't really need a, a catch-up or... You don't need a, a way to remind you of what the content is going to be about. But even so, the focus of Scooby-Doo has always been the gang. The gang has always been the, the primary vector for which the story is told. But really, the focus is actually in the monsters. And of course, you know, obviously that's the case, but not enough people talk about them. Not enough people talk about the, the absurdity and the weirdness and just the, 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 the strangeness of the, some of these monsters and some of the villains associated with them. The men behind the mask are often a lot weirder than the mask itself just because of their motivations. So I decided I was going to kind of, you know, pick up some, some metrics. I was going to make these up. And I was just going to grade every villain for Scooby-Doo Where Are You based on three metrics for a total score out of 30 to determine which one's the best objectively. And I will fight you on my scores. Do not try me. <laughs> I <laughs> so these three metrics. Creep factor. What? Wait. Creep factor. <laughs> just how creepy that this monster is, though the villain is in general. And... This can be a lot of things because, of course, your initial reaction to the monster is, is something to go into the creep factor. But also their accessories or their iconic bits like laughter or abilities, all of that falls into the creep factor. Then you have motivation. The motivation of the man behind the mask and also of the monster, the point of creating this monster. Whether it's a very realistic, well-thought-out motivation or an absolute insane just storm of nonsense that can you know give a pretty good high score either way but if it's just if it's just weak in both fronts that's going to be a low score and then you have novelty which is just how unique this this monster is in the world of scooby-doo because they reuse a lot of monsters and in the first season even they they <laughs> they reuse some concepts basically immediately so we're just gonna use novelty and uniqueness also, like power sets of monsters or things that they can do, all of that is under uniqueness. All, all of that can be considered. So with all of that out of the way, we're going to go in chronological order. And we're gonna, so we're going to start with episode one and go all the way to episode 25 of Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? in order of appearance. And then at the end of it, we're going to rank the top five. And so first and foremost, we have the Black Knight Ghost. This is episode one of Scooby-Doo, which is the Black Knight Ghost, and one of the only two episodes with an actual, like, legitimately unique title card, which was weird to me. So this Black Knight Ghost is pretty creepy, honestly. Like, it's just a dude in a suit of armor, really. Like, that's all it is. But you have to think about it from, like, the perspective of going into a museum and just a, a suit of armor coming to life, knowing it, it probably has a real weapon. A very night of the museum kind of situation, especially knowing that somebody else has already gone missing on the premises. This Black Knight is a lot more threatening than I originally re like put together upon just like remembering it. That and then the motivation for this particular like villain is pretty good, honestly. Like he's he's an art thief. He's he's stealing art and then forging the the art that he's stolen to put it back into the museum. And the guy that recognized that it was a forgery, he knocked out and, like, hid in a secret room. And so he's just like, oh, I'm going to scare people away because they're going to be looking for this guy. And that's fair. That's legitimate, actually. He's not just dressed up as a monster for no reason just to scare people while he's doing something he shouldn't be, which happens a lot, let me tell you. So, yeah, he, like, he's got good motivations. And then his, it, it, his novelty is okay. Like, admittedly, his novelty is the weakest part of him. He's just like a suit of armor. With no real unique powers, he's just a suit of armor. That's the first episode. Hey, like, come on, yeah, like, we'll give it a, we'll give it a, we'll give it a, a little bit of a break on this. So I would say, in terms of creepiness, we're gonna give him an eight. No, you know, let's 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 drop that to a seven. Let's drop that to a seven. Hang on. 
We'll give his motivation an eight because the things that he does actually like make sense and they're a good motivation. Like he's he's good at criminal is criminalisms, crim criminal activity thing. He's being, he's good at being a criminal. And then in novelty, we'll give him a six just to give him the benefit of the doubt. Uh, legitimately, if this wasn't the first episode, I'd say like a five. But first episode, definitely a six. So that brings his grand total up to I should have written it down. 21 out of 30, which is a good showing for the first monster. Next, we have the Ghost of Captain Cutler. And Ghost of Captain Cutler is a weird one because the Ghost of Captain Cutler is just, like, actually Captain Cutler. <laughs> like, his ghost is just himself. Uh, any, whatever. We're not talking about all that. Um, so... I had this one on, on VHS, actually, and I remember the title card. This is the only other episode other than What a Night for a Night that has a unique title card. Don't know why they stopped doing them. Probably cost too much money or something. I don't know. They were cheap. But I remember this one being decently scary. I just liked it. It was a comfort episode. But the the glowing green ectoplasmic goo look that he has in his diving suit and the fact that you can't – like you can see the glass, but it's like frosted over – so you should be able to see beyond it, but you can't. Though that in like combination with each other is pretty good, in all honesty. On top of the the sunken ships and the whole like debacle to to like their plot, because okay, the motivation here is is phenomenal, because he's dressing up as a ghost, as a as a, like a as like a like a diving suit ghost to steal yachts. From the ultra rich. <laughs> Why? <laughs> it's ridiculous because he's stealing these shots and then he's just repainting them and then reselling the yachts. He could have done this one time and been done with it. Like just like successfully sold off like two, three yachts at most and made millions and then dipped. But he didn't. He kept doing it. He kept. St he just loves stealing yachts. And uh, <laughs> it's really, it's really funny to me. And like you know, the diving suit aspect and the underwater like theme of this this episode gives it a really good novel feel on top of it. So honestly, I'm gonna give this one a much higher score than I really I really thought I would. Um, because we're gonna give it a seven on the creepiness because of the glowy footprints and the glowiness and just like he's glowy. Apparently, that's creepy in my mind. Uh, we're gonna give him a ten out of ten for motivation because I'll you know fuck the rich <laughs> and his novelty. We'll give him also a six because, you know, he's he's a right. he's good he's a right. and that brings our total up to twenty three out of thirty for Captain Cutler, my man, my boy. Also, before we get too much further in the video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, do all of that, do all the YouTube things. I just, I I I'm really hoping one day to be able to do this like as a job. I probably won't be able to, of course. No, it's you know like a luck based system, but you know. If you feel like it, watch and, and watch repeatedly. So number three, we have the Phantom. That's it. That's that's the entirety. That's his whole name. Oh, I gotta lean back. Oh, I'm getting old. Oh, I'm so I'm so close to the desk. Oh, I hate this. So the Phantom is a sheet ghost. <laughs> that's it. He's just a transparent dude in a sheet. That's the entirety of this ghost. Um, that being said, he's kind of creepy. Not not because of his, his visage, not because of how he looks, but he has a, a pretty strong presentation, a good laugh, a good power set even. He's, like, going through walls and stuff of that nature. And honestly, that adds a lot to even just the simplistic design. Well, you know what? We'll get into his motivation in a second because his novelty is very good. His novelty is very good because of his power set, because of his laugh, because he's a sheet ghost, which is funny as – it's funny as sheet. And um, also, the thing that I like the most about just this villain in general is that he's not a jerk. Like, he, he makes – like, he makes a sandwich for Shaggy at one point. Um, he talks to him in a skull. He's just, like, very – relaxed and like cool about things for some reason they went that away oh thanks man it's all right mm. Mm. <laughs> uh he's just, like he's a very interesting d 
dude. Like, he's very, very genuinely novel. That being said, his motivation sucks ass. Because he's looking for an abandoned tre- like a, a like a treasure, like that's rumored to exist in a in a castle, for some reason. Uh, there's a lot of tre- tre- uh, I'm sorry. There's a lot of treasure. In Stolen tre- treasures in castles. I had a stroke there. Um, but there's a lot of treasure in castles in the Scooby Doo universe, and there's a lot of people that just set up shop in the castles that the gang just breaks into. <laughs> like I don't really get it. Um, but this castle is abandoned, so why is he dressed up as a ghost scaring people, knowing these mystery-solving kids are out hunting for men in masks, and they will unmask him? Like, I don't, I don't get that. That makes no sense to me. Especially because it's revealed he's wanted in, like, five or six states. A lot of these criminals are wanted in a lot of states, and they just do this anyway. Not really following that logic, but hey, whatever makes you happy, guys. But with all of that being said, we're going to give his creepiness a 5, mostly because of the laugh and the presentation and, and sort of some of the things that make him novel. We're going to give him his, his novelty is going to be a 9 out of 10. Legitimately so fun and just inventive in the way that he's different than a lot of, a lot of the other villains over the course of Scooby-Doo. His motivation gets a 3 out of 10. The only reason he doesn't get less than that is because there are there are actually much worse motivations coming up. So stick around for that because that's oh they get dumb and uh, and then and with all of that in mind, we're that that brings the total up. I'm doing math. Uh, that brings the total up to seventeen out of thirty, which is more than I would have thought the Phantom would have gotten before making this list. But speaking of stupid. We have the minor 49er, ladies and gentlemen. And he's just he's just a dude with a beard. That's it. That's the monster. It's a dude on stilts with a beard. There's no creepy factor. He just looks like he just looks like a grandfather I know. Like he he isn't a monster. He is just a man. And and to make this worse, he doesn't have any powers. He has nothing. He he's just a guy. <laughs> With a beard and a hat. That is it. I have I have a little gnome dude on my mantle who looks just like the minor 49er. And and, and to make it worse, right? His motivations are that while looking they're an abandoned old west town for some reason. And even though the gold was mined out of here in the western times, the guy who did is the minor 49er found oil. He found a lot of oil apparently. But instead of telling the guy who he was a partner with who owned the property that he found oil, he decided he was going to scare him off and steal the oil. And and to make it worse, the guy he was partnered with like like was like, man, if you had just told me, we could have shared – and we would have shared the profits and been rich together. But instead, you had to dress up as a – you had to put on a beard, and you had to scare people. Like, it's so – it's so stupid. It's so stupid. They even acknowledge that this dude is an idiot in the episode. He's pretty novel, though. Like, he's, he's – he just he just slapped on a beard, and he's just like, all right, time to go scaring. <laughs> that, that's it. <laughs> so, overall, we're going to give his creepiness a 1 out of 10. We're going to give his motivations a 1 out of 10. We're going to give his novelty a 3 out of 10 just because I can't I can't bring myself to fucking despise it. I will say this, though. In the Scooby-Doo like, live-action movies, the second one had the monsters being brought to life, and Minor 49er was, for some reason, one of the ones they chose. I guess to cut back on budget. Um, and they let him breathe fire, which he can't do in, in Scooby-Doo Where Are You? Meaning he's worse even than in the live action movie. So yeah. Anyway, total five out of ten. Let's just keep going. And then, uh, then uh, uh, following the minor forty nine er, we have the witch doctor, who immediately doesn't even try to be a monster. Like he does not try at all. He's just he's just a dude with a witch doctor totem head, and that's it. That's all he is. The ghost of Geronimo is also there as a hologram. I think I I don't I don't know. He's just there um but the focus of this episode is the witch doctor who doesn't put on a voice he doesn't try to be scary he's just a guy going oh i'm gonna 
Oh, no, steal from dogs. Yeah, yeah, that's that's his motivation, is he's stealing dogs because he, in fact, is a dog racer, and he's stealing all of the competition, so his dog wins by default. But, like, I have a question about that. Um, If you race dogs, and all of the dogs around you are being kidnapped, and your dog isn't isn't kidnapped, so it wins by default, you're going to fall under suspicion, aren't you? Like, they're going to go, man, sure is weird that old Danny boy's dog didn't get taken. Oh, fucking fly. Didn't get taken when everyone else's did, huh? Yeah, that's a little weird. Let's investigate him. But no, that doesn't occur to him. That doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't brush against this, this dude's ginormous brain. And, and so, okay. Once again, not a very, not a very good one. Had to, had to simmer down after that. So, being that he's just a dude in a mask. And clearly just like a criminal. We're going to give him a 2 out of 10. He's not a 1 because he does have a mask. He's not just putting on a beard. And also he's a legitimate criminal, so he may just, like, be willing to body somebody. Never really, you know, does for sure. He chases some folks, but that's it. And we're going to give his motivation a 6 out of 10, honestly. Not because, like, I can poke a hole in it. Like, that hole is pretty large, which is why it doesn't get higher. But dog napping is a pretty unique motivation. Like, you don't really hear about people stealing dogs for dog races. So, you know, I'll take it. And then the novel, t- I mean, it's like a 3. It's not novel. It's not. Like, the ghost of Geronimo being there adds something. But that has nothing to do with the episode. Like, it's it's just a hologram. Like, a... It's supposedly, I don't know, maybe it was an actual ghost. They don't really divulge in it. Shaggy just sees the ghost of Geronimo and Rex. Uh, it, either way, like, sure, fucking whatever. <laughs> but that brings the total score up to an 11 out of 10. Now we're on to the good ones, though, because the ghost of Elias Kingston is... Oh, he's so good. So the ghost of Elias Kingston is one that... I think even the creators knew they found something special on on the entire episode because more clips from the theme song are taken from this episode than any other episode in the entire series. The mansion, the stuff going on inside of the mansion, Shaggy getting showered on, the bookshelf moving, all of that is taken from this episode. And the ghost of Elias Kingston himself, even though he's just like a blue dude in a trench coat, has a very unique cadence in the way he speaks, and also has the power to age somebody to the point that we're to believe for a little while that a man has died and turned to bone because of the powers of this ghost. He all, There's like a unique, like, noise that comes off of his fingers when he's using the power that ages the people. And it's all very creepy. It's, oh, he's so good. He's so good in the creep factor. But then his motivations are to, like, steal his own family's money. I don't really know why or how he doesn't just, like, get a lawyer. Like, I don't I don't really understand that. But, you know, how he goes about what he's going about is, is, is pretty good. It's just, like, why? Like, it's your family. Just... Just sue for it. Like, it would make more sense. And also, I don't think he's really committing any crimes. Uh, he's he's just wanting his own family's money. I don't really... Not really following through with your motivations, my dude. But, you know, I like your gumption at the, at the very least. And the whole being aged into a skeleton thing, that's a novel concept. That's cool shit. Just, like, there's not really a whole lot else that really you know, like, separates him, because he's clearly just a man. But it's just, it's like, oh, it's such a, it's so good. In case you can't tell, I really like this one. So we're going to give the creepiness a 10 out of 10. Just everything about this one, rock solid, lands perfectly. Motivations, gonna have to give it a 7. Because he goes about it in a cool way, but at the end of the day, it's kind of a dumb motivation to steal your own family's money. And then the novelty... Got to give that an 8. That's a solid 8. That's a solid, like, novel concept for a total score of 25 for the Ghost of Elias Kingston. Now we have Ape Man. It's just a monkey costume. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Um, and uh, I, I do want to briefly touch on a, a concept that exists within Scooby-Doo Universe, which is the power of monster masks. Um, because there's a whole article on the wiki for it. And it's very... 
interesting like that they point this stuff out because this really makes ape man a little bit better because it makes you realize that he can take on the actual physical properties of an ape uh but it, anyway the creepiness really isn't there <laughs> Just a, he's just a he's just an ape man. That's it. He's just a big monkey running around doing big monkey things, and I I, I can't bring myself to really be even uh, like remotely afraid of the ape man. Maybe maybe I should be. Maybe there's something I'm doing wrong that like the ape man is doing right. Maybe I'm just not scared of the right things. I guess I don't know. Either way, he's not scary. He's not, and his motivations are kind of dumb uh again stupidity is is common in criminals um in the scooby-doo universe don't want any actual criminals coming after me <laughs> but the 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 motivations for the ape man because he is revealed to be a stunt man who is mad that he did not get cast as the lead role in a movie despite being the stunt man and never being anything other than the stunt man it's not even really clear if he auditioned for the lead role. He just was tired of being a stunt man, I guess. I don't. I don't know. The, the like, and then also, whenever the, the the casting popped up, and he was angry about not getting the lead role, and then the ape man appears. Little little sus, my guy. Little sus. But we are gonna give it a pretty decent review on the novel side of things because he just looked at this monkey costume and went. <laughs> Return. Return to monkey. And then started beating people with sticks and, like, trying to murder his cast and crew. And you can't, you can't fault the guy for that one. So, overall, creepiness, 4 out of 10. Not scary. It's a monkey man. It could be scary. Like, if I, okay, don't get me wrong. If I, like, went down an alley and, and, and there was just a gorilla there and he was just, like, screaming at me and beating walls... Yeah, I would be scared. So actually, yeah, we'll bump it up to a five. We'll bump it up to a five. I'll give. I talk myself up on that one. His motivations are stupid, though. We're gonna give that a, a five. Also, uh, it's not the worst motivation in the world. You can see the revenge and why he would want to like be mad at people. It's still kind of dumb, but not the dumbest. Once again, Scooby Doo bell curve. Um, but we're gonna give it a five, and then we're gonna give his novelty like a nine out of ten, just because I like him being a monkey. He's a big, big old ape man. Or, but that brings the total up to a 19 out of 30. So Charlie the Robot is a great one. He is such a good monster for Scooby-Doo. Because this is the first non-human monster ever in Scooby-Doo. Because he is a robot. He is legitimately a robot who could 100% kill a man. Because it's shown like he is strong and he is psychopathic. Like... He's a robot. He doesn't care. He's not really a psychopath. He's just a robot. And he also looks like this. Like, come on. All, everything about this this right here, I hope I put a picture on here in post. Um, everything about this is scary. But then, of course, it's a very Friday the 13th kind of motivation where it's not really Charlie that's the problem. There's a woman who runs an amusement park and doesn't want – the robots dealing with kids, so she makes Charlie, who was a good robot, act bad. Meaning, the motivation is basically, technology's bad for the kids. I kinda sound like Droopy. Ooh, I could, that's a pretty good Droopy impression. I could probably make money with this. It's, it's fitting. It's fitting that I'm doing this on Hanna-Barbera. Hanna-Barbera episode. Getting off, getting off topic there. But but the novelty for this episode is also easily in the highest tier. It's it's an actual like legitimate non-human threat. It's the first one in Scooby Doo canon. He is legitimately a threat because he is a a robot in a in a carnival or a, uh, in an amusement park that wants to kill people. That's that's a good concept. That's a good horror concept. I like it. So. For creepiness, we're going to give him a 10 out of 10 because he can kill you. He will kill you, and he will feel nothing. The motivation, 4 out of 10 because technology's bad. And then his novelty, again, 10 out of 10. We're going hard on this one for the 10s. So that brings the total score up to a 24. Next, we have the Puppet Master, who's not actually given a name in the episode. We're just, like, told 
this later on, I guess. I don't know. He's, he's the puppet master. He makes puppets, and he has puppets, and he puppeteers puppets. And he's very good at it, to the point that they are lifelike. And by himself, he's not that scary. He's just a dude. He's like an ugly dude with a hat. Uh, very fan of the opera kind of look to him, just like just an ugly guy. Uh, but the adding like the puppets and like his puppeteering as a concept makes him a lot scarier because what if he had like a legitimate threat of a puppet? What if he could control humans like puppets because he is actually like controlling life-size puppets on strings? Like there's a lot of thinking and thought that can be thrown into this one, and I I like it. It's oh it's it's good it's good. And his motivation's fine. Like he's just a criminal, like counterfeiting money. That's it. Uh, he just doesn't want people to find out that what he's doing, uh, and people are getting kind of close, so he's doing this weird, scary puppet routine. Like, he's just scaring people because they they might find out that he's uh, he's counterfeiting money. Which there are less conspicuous ways to hide your counterfeiting operation, but like it's not the worst. It's not the worst. <laughs> and we're gonna give the novelty. Like he's he's pretty novel. Like he's the puppets are very unique. It's a very good concept on that regard. So that's actually. Fair. Like, it's fair. That all being said, like, he's just a criminal. Like, not really all that interesting. He, he himself isn't very interesting. So the novelty kind of does suffer from that one. So, creepiness. And this is counting the puppets as well. We're going to give that one a, a – and, like, so, creepiness. And this is counting the puppets as well as his puppeteering abilities. We're going to give him a 7 out of 10 because it's not bad. Motivations, though, 5 out of 10. Middling. He's just a counterfeiter, and he's just – like, this is the stupidest way he could hide his operation by drawing more attention to himself. Like, I don't really get that one, but it is what it is. And then the novelty is pretty good. It's like a solid 8 out of 10 because of the puppets and the puppetry. Like, I like puppets. I like I like the concept of controlling puppets for weapons. Like, Kankuro in Naruto was one of my favorite side characters for a very long time. And Sasori of the Akatsuki was very, very interesting to me. All of that together kind of, like, I just like the puppet concept. It's very cool. Which is just a roundabout way of saying that I'm biased here. <laughs> so, total. We're going to be giving him a, a total out of 30 for 20. Yeah, just 20. 20 out of 30. There we go. Now, we have the ghost clown. And man, let me tell you, this is a good one. It, first off, he's a clown. He gets points for already being a clown and being a, a creepy clown at that. Like he, he's he's already like a like a weird creepy clown immediately off the bat, meaning he's fucking scary. Because a lot of people have agoraphobia. They're they're terrified of clowns, so that's. You know, it's just something that people are already scared of. And then he presents himself in a creepy way and is a hypnotist with the ability to hypnotize not only people but animals, including dogs and lions, meaning he could have an army of circus animals at any point. It's it, – it, and then, okay, the creepiest aspect of this episode to me is the fact that he hypnotizes Daphne, Shaggy, and Scooby, and they end up in different outfits. Meaning, he most likely either undressed them or made them undress in front of him. Which is a weird, creepy, just like skin-crawling concept to think about. His motivations, though, not the best. I mean, they're decent because he was stealing from the circus that he worked for. And that circus then kicked him out because they called him stealing. And he's coming back for revenge. Just like petty criminal shit, basically. Which is, like, decent. Like, that's a decent reason to come back and look for revenge on a specific circus. And then his novelty just – if he was just a clown, it would be like a 5 out of 10 because clowns – eh. In Scooby-Doo, right now, we haven't seen a clown yet. But it's not, like, something that, that by itself gets a good score. But the hypnotist aspect, that's good. That comes back a lot in Scooby-Doo also. Hypnotism, super powerful in Scooby-Doo. It's – for whatever reason, like, that's where Ultra Instinct Shaggy comes from. It's from Shaggy being hypnotized. Like, I'm not even kidding. So, it's a, it's obviously a good concept for Scooby-Doo, at least. So, overall, we're going to give this creepiness a, a rock-solid 10 out of 10. Like, there's no doubt in my mind about that one.
and the motivations, we're going to give them, like, a solid eight. Like, it's a decent motivation. It's not the best in the world, but, like, it makes sense. It's it's a good, decent concept. And then his novelty for being a scary hypnotist clown is going to be a seven out of ten. It's not bad. So, but that brings it up to, like, 25, which, pretty good by my count. And then we got a list in this episode, boy. Let me tell you, we got the Gypsy, Dracula, Wolfman, and Frankenstein's Monster. All in one episode entitled A Gaggle of Galloping Ghosts. They're not scary. <laughs> Velma ruins that immediately. Like, let me just go ahead and tell you that one. Go now or abandon all hope of seeing the sun again. You stop that. But none of them are really scary because they're clearly movie monsters. And you're just like, okay, well, I, yeah, it's not, it's not really scary. None of these are, are really scary. They're pretty funny. They're decent. They're, they're, they're entertaining. They're not scary. And then, like, the motivation of this dude is really, really, really fucking dumb. Wanted in, like, seven states and is an incredible makeup artist. And, like, he can disappear and hide and just fool everyone. But despite being wanted in seven states, he finds another abandoned castle. Don't know why people wanted in like five or more states hiding castles. Like, like it's not conspicuous. No, it's it's not inconspicuous. And he's stealing from the castle, and he's dressing up as monsters to scare people away from the castle. Why? Nobody else is investigating this castle. Like, no one else is there in this castle. He just happens to be breaking into castles. <laughs> also, why are there so many castles in the American countryside in Scooby-Doo? Where did all these castles come from? What is this? Why? Why? It's <laughs> a question for another day. I'm sorry. I just thought about that right now. Like, why? Why are there so many castles? I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. But the novelty for this episode is definitely, like, solid. Like, it's definitely one of the better ones because there's just a bunch of different monsters, and that wasn't a concept that we had really explored in Scooby-Doo up until this point. So that's that's a pretty good, like, strong thing, especially whenever it's revealed at the end that he was also the gypsy at the beginning of the episode. Solid twist. Solid twist. I like it a lot. So, in terms of creepiness, 1 out of 10. Not a single spook in this episode. Let me tell you about it right now. Uh, the motivation, 1 out of 10. Quit breaking into castles and stealing their fabled treasures. <laughs> and then the novelty, 10. It's a 10. Like, it's a, it's, it's a good novel idea. So that brings the total score up to a 12 out of 10, which is more than I thought I was going to give this episode. Let me tell you that. Now we've got The Mummy. Specifically, The Mummy of Anka. And it's just a mummy. It's not scary. Just a mummy. Like, if you're scared of mummies, it's scary, but it's not. And and it's got some of the worst motivations in the entirety of Scooby-Doo. And I mean that. Because the there's a doctor, like a, like a like an Egyptian archaeologist, who Shaggy, like, robbed the museum a little bit. Like, he stole an ancient coin on accident. Like, he pocketed it, being a stoner. He's just like, oh, look at this! And then that's my Shaggy voice. Oh, look! He puts it in his pocket and he just walks off. And instead of the doctor going to Shaggy and going, hey, we need that coin back. I know you have it. He dresses up as a mummy to try to steal it. Because he knows that there's something else in the sarcophagus. Like a diamond scarab or something. Which I don't... I don't. They would have already had that. He would have already opened it. And it's just, it's the, it's the worst. It's the worst motivation. It is the absolute worst. And the novelty isn't there either because he's just a fucking mummy. There's, there's no jewelry. He has no bling. You don't see his rotted face or anything. He doesn't have mummy rot. Nothing. Just a mummy. It's better than a zombie. If it's just a plain zombie, it's just like, okay, yeah, that's not, that's not nothing. The mummy is a little better than a zombie. It's not good. So the creepiness, we're, <laughs> we're going to give it a 1 out of 10. Motivation, we're going to give a 1 out of 10. <laughs> and the novelty, we're going to give a 2 out of 10. 2 for not being a zombie. <laughs> that gives us a total score of 4 out of 30. But speaking of zombies, we got the zombie 
and the witch. Which together, more novel than just a zombie, so let's disregard everything that I just said. But, starting with creepiness, of course, they're not. They're, they're, they're really more of a silly duo. Like, they have some decently creepy aspects, and, like, their locale is really scary because they're in, like, a swamp bayou kind of area, and they're paddling with, like, a metal-tipped pole. It's just like, what the fuck is happening? What are these guys doing? Also, but they're, they're also really, like, into it. Like, they're really into their act because we find out that these two were, like, hardened criminals that stole a bank vehicle and, like, sank it in the swamp to hide it from the law. And now they're swimming around or, like, paddling around with their metal tip pole in hopes that they slam into it and find it. Which is cool. Like, there's history in this. They, they, they wor they're working together, and there's two villains, different and distinct. It's not just one guy dressing up as four fucking monsters. And I will say also that the fact that they are criminals, like they stole a an armored vehicle, puts a little bit more fear into the concept of them running around. Like they didn't dress up as monsters, they might have actually just whipped out a gun and killed somebody. But monster masks do their monster magic. So there's actually a lot to be uncovered with this episode. And then on top of that as well, the witch and the zombie together are a pretty good duo. They're a very novel thing that like... Like, witches are surprisingly tied up in the lore of some zombies that we don't really think about a whole lot, and they work well off of each other. Like, one's a bumbling buffoon, and the other's, like, clearly the mastermind. It's a good combo that's worked for a lot of things. So it's a pretty novel idea. So overall, creepiness mostly coming from the concept that they are, like, potentially going to murder somebody. We'll give it a 4 out of 10. It's less the monsters being creepy, more the villains being creepy. Uh, the motivation... 8 out of 10. They're just trying to find their, their, their thing for their previous crime. Like, it's a pretty good one. And then Novelty will give another 8, because I'm feeling generous. What can I say? Bringing the total score up to a 20 out of 30. So we just got another guy. Haven't had just another fucking guy in a while. Might as well, you know? Just a stinky dude. Yeah, this is Redbeard. Redbeard is also dumb. Like... I don't. I, I guess the less monstrous you look, the more stupid you are. I don't really understand that, but that's clearly how it's working. Because he's just a dude with a red beard. That is it. He's a pirate, and he's he's stinky and stupid. And I keep saying he's stupid because I really mean it. This is one of the worst villains in terms of motivation because he's he owes somebody money. So his goal is to attack his own ship steal the things that he was delivering, and then sell them on the side. Now, being that he was already in possession of these things, he didn't have to steal them. He could have just lost them. Then, being that he, he could have wrecked his ship, taken everything off of it as just a normal dude, claimed the insurance from it, and then sold the stuff on the side that way, but he didn't do it. He dressed up as a pirate and robbed his own ship. It's really dumb. It's one of the more painfully stupid Scooby-Doo plots. The novelty's fine. Like, it's a, he's got his own pirate ship. He's a pirate. That's cool. That's all right. I'll give him, I'll give him points for that. Everything else tanks him. Creepiness, one. Motivation, one. One. <laughs> novelty, seven. We'll give him a seven because he's a pirate. Pirates are cool. Just not as ghosts because he's not even like the ghost of Redbeard. It's just Redbeard's just a dude he doesn't have ghost powers or anything so that gives it a, a total of like nine out of ten and yes i know he's called the ghost of redbeard in the episode he's not a ghost he's clearly just a man from the very beginning you know so yeah anyway moving on i love the spooky space kook He's, oh, he's so good. His, he, mostly, okay, mostly his creepiness and his novelty. Because look at this thing. All right? Already looks pretty scary. But now listen to this thing. <laughs> that, coupled with the fact that he had, like, a hologram spaceship that, that we didn't know was a hologram at first, of course. Because in the 60s, holograms just look real. Put th those things together and his, like, iconic thing where he's walking down and he's just like, Whoa! like that like oh oh it's so good oh it's good he's scary and he's 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 a he's an alien monster ghost thing we don't even get a name for him really in the episode he's just a scary monster 
and nice sprites. <laughs> um, uh, but the problem comes uh, with the motivation. Because it's the neighbor of the guy who we've been, like, working with in this episode. And he, he wants to scare away the Air Force who's coming to take the land. He wants to scare them away and scare anyone else away so he can buy it. He wants to scare people. Like, let me, re yeah, I'll repeat that. He wants to scare people away so he can buy the land. He can, he could just buy the land at any other point. He could have bought the land whenever it was first, like, put on the market. But he's not. He's buying the land after scaring people away dressed as a space alien. That's dumb. I'll give him points because he does say he wants to buy the land cheap so he's scaring people, but that's still stupid. It's still dumb. So, creepiness. 10 out of 10. He's a creepy, creepy boy. Motivation. 2 out of 10 for being dumb, but gosh darn it, I just can't bring myself to hate you, and you give me one, like, you've got one good point, so I'll give you one extra over a 1 over the minor 49er. And then the novelty, we'll give him, we'll give him a pretty good score for that. We'll give him like a 10 out of 10. I, it's a pretty novel, like, ghost, and he's got a spaceship hologram and stuff. And he's got like a bunch of dudes, like, like wax dudes or something, I don't know. Either way, the point is, is we're, we're at like a 22 out of 30 on this one. And then we have the phantom shadows, or just the, the two green ghosts with the chains. Uh, it's, it's alright. They're fine. They're kind of creepy. Like, they got scary faces, and they're green, and they got chains that rattle. They got a good, good, strong cackle. Um, a very, very, like, rock-solid kind of, like, laugh that you hear in the distance, and you're just like, oh, no, I'm gonna die. Uh, that, coupled with the chain rattling, is really, really good for setting their, their, their whole shebang, their whole facade of, of, of fear. Their facade of fear. That sounds like a cool song title. The motivation, though is probably dumber than minor 49ers. <laughs> because, okay. Well, we have to talk about the plot of the episode, because the plot of the episode says that a man that Scooby saved the life of in the past wants to split his inheritance among Scooby and his relatives. It's a million dollars, and that's in 60s money, so that's like two million dollars. <laughs> um, but it's it's a lot. It's a lot of money. And there are two lawyers, Mr. Creeps and Mr. Crawls, who are obviously the villains from the get-go. But they want to scare everyone away so they can keep the money. So basically, the, the relatives and Scooby have to stay in the mansion overnight to claim the inheritance, whatever portion they, they would get based on how many people are still there. And he says the mansion is haunted. So these lawyers try to scare everyone away, in which they succeed in doing for everybody but the gang, of course. But then it's revealed that... The money is Confederate money, a million dollars of Confederate money, which is weird in itself. Like, that's just a weird thing in general, um, being that the will was written recently because Scooby saved the guy's life not that long ago, and Scoob's a dog. But Creeps and Crawls would have seen this money. They would have seen this inheritance. And known that it was essentially valueless, and they still dressed up as ghosts to take it. That's dumb. That's really, really stupid. That They are lawyers. Already making decent money because they're lawyers. And instead of, of not doing any of the things that they did for worthless Confederate money, they go to jail. It's, it's stupid. It's really stupid. Really stupid, and I hate them. The novelty's all right. They're ghosts. They're just ghosts. But they're I just oh talking about their motivation actually makes me angry. So in creepiness, I'm gonna give them an eight for motivation. One, the hardest one. You know what? No, we're just gonna do we're gonna do something special just for creeps and crawls. We're gonna give them a big fat goose egg, a zero out of ten, and then they're gonna get a four out of ten for novelty because they're not just plain ghosts. They got clinking chains and stuff, and they got a good environment. But yeah, zero for motivation. So that is a 12. That is a 12 out of a possible 30, which is more than I want to give. And then we have the snow ghost, which is just a yeti. He's just a yeti. And, 
admittedly, right, like, same concept with the ape man. If I saw a yeti just, like, while I was out, like, a big-ass fucking, like, yeti, I would cry. Um, and, and, like, so I get that. That's fairly scary. I'll, I'll admit that. But also coupled with the fact that the snow ghost can fly? Oh, yeah, no, uh, that's some scary, that's spooky. I don't like that. Hate it. But then their motivations are, they're just, so, okay. Motivations are dumb. <laughs> I think I think you can tell what I'm about to say before I say it. Um, but the motivations are they're jewel thieves. There's two of them. There's one that's the snow ghost, and then there's another one who's just down the river. And they're stealing jewels and then hollowing out logs and sending them down river to the next jewel thief where he takes them somewhere else. I don't know. They never really expound on that. Um, but they're hollowing out these logs and doing this, and he's using the snow ghost to keep people away from the sawmill. So they're just sending logs down the river, which is stupid, because what if, you know, it's caught in a, a, a current and flips and, like, the jewels get lost, or somebody else finds it because it's unsecured down the river, or what if there's a miscommunication and one of them doesn't get them? It's really stupid is my point. But then, also, why dress up as a ghost? Why not just, like, put some tape around the sawmill and go, don't come in here? That's it. That's all you gotta do. Like, it's broken. It doesn't work. Don't test it. That's it. That's so, that's better than, the, it's, it really feels like for these last couple of episodes of the first season, they really just phoned in the motivations. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway. Novelty's good, though. It's a flying Yeti ghost. Like, that's a that's a hell of a combination of things right there. So, yeah, we're going to give that one a... That, that's a good that's a good novel concept. So, in terms of creepiness, I'm going to give that a 7 out of 10. It's not the scariest thing in the world. I think the spooky space kook is scarier by, like, a fair margin. But it, it, I could see how it would scare the absolute Jesus out of somebody. Uh, motivation, 2 out of 10. Because, I mean, they're obviously competent jewel thieves. They've, they've been doing it for a while. It's just dumb that they're sending it this way, you know? Like, why? And then in terms of novelty, 10 out of 10. There's no question. Like, it's a, it's a flying ghost yeti. Come on. Like, duh. So with all of that in mind, that brings the total score up to a 19 out of 30. Then we have the ghost of Mr. Hyde. And this, not a, not a good outing for this villain. Like, the episode's fine. The episode's, like, pretty good because they try to, like, put suspicion onto somebody else. They play with the formula a little bit, but the villain himself just sucks. Because first and foremost, he's not creepy. He's just a dude. He's just a green dude with a hat. He doesn't have any powers other than breaking into places and stealing jewels. Like, he just climbs walls, uh, and that's it. He's, uh, uh, and, like, his motivation is fine. Like, he's just stealing jewels. Like, it, once he, there's a lot of jewel thieves, thieves in Scooby-Doo, and that's weird. It's a weird thing that happens, but you, you just, learn to, just learn to accept it, I guess. And his novelty is crap because of the fact that he is literally the ghost of Mr. Hyde, and there's a character named Mr. Jekyll. Maybe Dr. Jekyll. It may even just straight up be Dr. Jekyll, meaning the moment that he's there, you're just like, oh, it's Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Got it. There's the villain. Got him. And then they're trying to misdirect you, and you're like, no, it's Dr. Jekyll. Duh. I, it's, it's stupid. Like, they could have named him anything else, and it would have been much better. But because of the naming convention they went with, it's dumb. So, in Creep Factor, we're going to give him a... F we're going to give him a three. I was going to say four, but we're going to give him a three because it's just a green dude in a hat with a trench coat. He looks like he might flash me. That's the scariest thing about him. Motivation's going to be a five because middle-of-the-road jewel thief. He's just taking money. He's just a thief. He's climbing walls and taking money. And then that novelty is a big old fat 1 out of 10. It's not good. And that brings our grand total up to a 9 out of a possible 30. So now we have the ghost of Zintuo and his henchmen. And you have to include those because the henchmen are really the primary villains in this episode. Uh, this episode was really good. Like, on its own, this episode is one of the better ones. It's one of my favorites. It's the Mystery Mask Mix-Up. I had this one on, like, an, like, a VHS. I also had an advertisement for this one on a different VHS. I think it was... I think it was on my Scooby-Doo Zombie Island VHS that I had this advertisement. So I remember this one pretty well. Um, basically, though, 
it's just dudes. Like, they're they're just dudes. Like, you feel like you might actually be in danger of them because they do succeed in kidnapping Daphne for some reason instead of just taking the mask that they want. Um, but they call them zombies. They call the henchmen zombies. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense because it's clearly just guys. Like, they're talking and shit, and they're driving. I don't... I don't really get why they call them zombies, but they're zombies, I guess. And then Zintuo himself is also just clearly a guy. Like, just, like, he's playing up the Zintuo aspect even whenever the cameras are off. Like, whenever it's just him and his men, he's still acting like that. They all are. Don't really get that, but, eh. But then, they get the mask, right? They just want the mask. That's it. Why don't they just leave? Also, also, also. Why do the henchmen have uh, have have a have a piece of paper telling the gang where the hideout is? I don't get I don't get it. Scooby Doo Bell Curve, Scooby Doo Bell Curve. Um, but the novelty is definitely there because we have a whole different locale. Like we're in Chinatown, probably in San Francisco, and there's a there's a chase song and like this is really more the episode than than the monsters themselves. But the concept of the henchman has only really been explored in the Redbeard episode, and I hate that one, so <laughs> we're just going to keep going on this. And so it's a very novel-feeling episode. I don't know if you can hear that, but there's somebody jamming out there. But yeah, so in terms of just, like, pure creep factor, I'm going to have to give them, like, a 4 out of 10 because they're not zombies, despite what the show desperately wants you to believe. They're not zombies. And the dude, like, the ghost of Zintuo himself is just a guy. But you feel like you might actually be in danger from them, so we'll give them a four. And their motivation just to steal that mask is good. It's just, it's a simple, clean-cut motivation. There's a reason for them to be pursuing the gang. All of that. But, like, why didn't they leave when they had the mask? So that's going to get a six out of ten. And then mostly because the episode is good, we're going to give them a, the novelty of this one, like, a ten out of ten. Just because I have a soft spot for this one. And you can't convince me that this is not a 10 out of 10. So that brings the total up to a 20 out of 30. Then we have the Creeper, who for some reason has become like a very iconic Scooby-Doo villain. Despite just being like a hunchback dude going, Creeper. And he is saying paper. He's not saying Creeper, which is something that even the creators of Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase got wrong. Because he is, he's just, he's going, Paper, because he's talking about the the bank paper or something. I, I don't like the one that they have that has his picture on it. I guess, but most people think he's just saying creeper. Which either way, it works. Anyway, creep factor pretty high, honestly. Despite just being like a suited man, like with a hunchback, he's got like super strength and rides a horse and like he has all these skills and talents. It, just, yeah, he's pretty scary, honestly. Like I'll give him credit for that. The novelty isn't bad either because, like, he's going grrr, brr, brr. like he's got a hunchback and he's he's not bad. Like he's really the he's the definition of better than average in basically every regard because he's also a, a bank president who's stealing money from his own bank and got caught and he's looking for like the evidence. You know, like he's looking he's trying to get the evidence and cover his ass. And people in the Scooby Doo universe just believe in ghosts and monsters. So it's really easy just to convince people that he is a ghost or a monster. So I can't really fault him. But yeah, the Creeper is, is a solid entry in, in, like, every category that I could think of. So we're going to give his creepness, creepiness, his creepiness, we're going to give his creeperness an 8 out of 10. His motivation for just stealing money from his own bank is 7 out of 10 because it happens every day. And we're going to give his novelty another 7 out of 10. And that brings the total ever, of, of everything up to a 22 out of 30. Now... We have the caveman, and he's not creepy. He's creepier than the minor 49er because he's big, and he's a caveman, and he's just, like, hitting things with a club. But he's not creepy. It's just a caveman. Like, he, like Neanderthals were probably, like, maybe a little taller and a little stronger than us. But they're not, like, super strength monkey buffoons like we see in cartoons and stuff. You know, they're not like, Ooh! and then pick up a car and throw it strong or anything like that. They're not superhuman. Um, but yeah, that's sort of how he's portrayed. He doesn't really do anything either. He's just like there with a stick. That's it. It's kind of weird. I will say though, that the motivation of the villain is pretty good because he wants to steal a device from his partner and sell it because this device allows for you to communicate with fish. Like 
hear them speak English. And that's really cool. And, like, admittedly, I would also want to steal that. I would want that. I wouldn't want to sell it. That's why I'm going to dock a couple from that. But, I like, I, I get wanting to steal that. I fully understand that. Like, sell it as your own invention or something at the very least. Like, it's a good – like, it's a solid reason to want to do crime. And then, and then the novelty of it isn't bad because, like, basically, like, this is based on the fact that they found a real frozen caveman. It was lost. So then this guy found a caveman suit, which somehow looked exactly like the caveman that got lost, despite the fact that he had never seen the caveman. He froze the caveman suit. <laughs> which, how did he do that? Um, in, in a perfect block of ice, it got lost at sea, which then washed up to him. And then he defrosted it in his own lab, despite, like, he's not an archaeologist, he's just an oceanographer, or an aquaticist, I don't know, science man for the water. And he defrosts it and then gets the suit out and puts it on. Again, for, for like a novel thing, that's pretty novel, if not absolutely shitstormingly insane. So we got to give him credit where credit's due for that. So in creepiness, two out of ten, he's just a caveman. He's just a Neanderthal. In motivation, though, nine out of ten. Not giving it a ten because he's. I don't think he should just sell it for millions. He should just like hold on to it and patent it as his own. As a, a, he should patent it as his own device. Maybe kill his partner. Maybe do some murder. But, yeah, not a 10. Novelty, though, for all of those steps he took to get to where he is, 8 out of 10. Easy peasy. Like, absolutely no doubt in my mind. Bringing the total score up to a 19 out of 30. Now we have the Headless Spectre. And I, I want so much to like the Headless Spectre. His creepiness phenomenal like the the headless concept so you know like oh that's not just a dude oh shit what the fuck that's a guy that's a tall man that's a tall man without a head i'm scared of that he's also got like a really iconic laugh <laughs> and i really i really dig his creep factor but his motivations are some of the dumbest in the show I keep saying that, but God, these criminals are stupid. And the reason I say that is because the man who is the Headless Spectre is A, not really the villain of this episode, but B, trying to find a treasure in a house. We don't know why, we don't know what's going on, and then it's revealed later on that he owns the property. He owns the house. Meaning, <laughs> meaning that he has the rights to the treasure that he's looking for. And in instead of just looking for it, he sets up booby traps, ghosts, and himself to scare people away. How many people are, 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 are trying to break into this man's house for his treasure? I don't, I don't get it. It's, it's really, it's really stupid. But the novelty of it is good. Because he, he's setting up like booby traps and like a like a ghost helium balloon thing, and like later on his neighbor breaks in and throws like a sheet on it, is going at a wall with an axe. Like <laughs> it's like what the fuck? <laughs> it's it's a weird one. It's a weird episode. But yeah, it's a, it's a he's creepy. He's creepy enough to give him a ten out of ten in that factor. But his novel, like his motivations are, oh, they're not there. It's really stupid. But I'm not gonna give it a zero. I'm not going to put him on that level. He's on the level with Minder 49er at the very least, though. That is, a, that is a 1 out of 10. And his novelty is pretty good. It's like a 6 out of 10. It's not the best. It's not the worst. So that brings the total up to a 17 out of a possible 30. And then we have Monotikitia, which his mask is problematic, but let's not talk about it. Uh, because he's not... We're just going to kind of zoom past this one because he's not scary. He's just kind of offensive. Like, he, he goes, and he's got a black face mask on. Like, I don't I don't really think I like this. Uh, <laughs> the statue is pretty scary, though. Like, he has, a, like, a statue that's going around and doing things, and that's kind of neat. So we'll give him points for that one. Uh, his motivation is just, like, he's shucking pearls. Like, he's just, he's just making pearls. That's it. I, I don't. I don't know if that's illegal even. Like, he's scaring people in villages away so he can sh get pearls. He can find pearls. Like, just find them. Not 
Not real sure why he needed to scare people away, but, you know, whatever. Sure, fine. Let's go. And then the novelty is definitely there. Like, he's a tiki dude. He, there's this big-ass statue on wheels that, like, pick up houses, which, where did that come from? They say it's just a parade float, but, it, like, it picks up a house at one point. So, yeah, like, he put in some effort into it, so we'll give him a point for some novelty, but... Yeah, no, creepiness, 3 out of 10. Motivation, 3 out of 10. Novelty, we'll give a 7 out of 10. We'll give a 7 out of 10 for the novelty, mostly for the statue. So that's a total possible, t to like, to like, that's a total score of 13 out of 30. And then we have the werewolf from a previous episode. From, from the Gaggle of Galloping Ghosts episode, it's the same werewolf. <laughs> the exact same costume design. Uh... It's it, uh, it's not bad, admittedly. Like taking that previous one out of out of like thought, and just using this one as the only reference we have. It's not bad. He's fine. It's not good, but he's fine. Uh, he makes like good like <laughs> like he makes good <laughs> good monster noises, and he's kind of frightening. He is a bit of a coward though, which we'll get to in a second. Um, but. It, novelty suffers because, obviously, he was just reused on a previous episode. Same hair and everything. Just meant to model the, the classic Wolfman. And it just, it comes off as very lazy by Scooby, like, by, by the writers, really, and the animators. And I know they reuse character models and stuff, but still, come on. Could have done a little better. Could have done at least a little something different on this one. But, his motivations... Or, oh my god, they're the best. They're the best. Because he's a sheep rustler. He's stealing sheep and selling them on the black market. On the sheep black market. He's, and he, 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 he's dressed up as a werewolf to scare people away from finding out that he's stealing sheep and selling them on the black market. It's really stupid. And I like it a lot. <laughs> because it's just like, dude, this, <laughs> there's better ways to hide this operation than dressing up as a werewolf. <laughs> All right. All right. So creepiness, creep factor. Uh, Well, wait, no, no, no. We got to talk about the fact that, like, as he's falling and, like, dangling, he doesn't stay in character. He actually, like, legitimately asks for help in his normal voice. He's just like, no, help me. Good God. Good golly gee, help! And they do, and they're like, oh, yeah, you're just a dude. You're not the werewolf. <laughs> just like, okay. Alright. <laughs> um, so, yeah, creepiness, 6 out of 10. Or 6 out of 10. He, uh, like, he's he's not bad. Novelty, we'll give a 5. We'll give a 5, and I know I'm doing it out of order, but that's just because his motivation for fucking sheep rustling is a 10 out of 10, and I refuse to listen to criticism, give him, giving him a total score of 21 out of 30. Let's go, Mr. Werewolf. And then, the final episode of Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? has the Wax Phantom. And let me say, I wasn't really sure about this episode. I hadn't seen this one too many times growing up, and I didn't really remember it that well. But let me say... The design of the Wax Phantom is really good. It's really creepy and unsettling, and, like, he's melting, and, like, there's all of this stuff wrong with him and his visage. It's very eerie to look at, and you can only imagine in, like, a hyper-realistic way what it would look like, and it's, oh, it's good. It's really good. But the problems come with the motivation? Uh, the motivation isn't good, because, like, okay— it starts strong because he's embezzling money from the TV station that he works for. And he wants to get away. Like, he wants to go to South America. But he already has the money. He's already successfully embezzled it. And he's sticking around to scare some motherfuckers for no reason. He could have already been gone. But instead, he dresses up as a phantom... As a, as a wax phantom and scares people. Why? What's the point? It's, uh, starts out so strong, starts out so promising. Could have been a very, very high scoring one, but that, that fucks it up. But the novelty is good because he also has like wax figures and things that come to life to help him. 
So with all of that in mind, everything there that I just said in mind, we're going to give this creepiness a 10 out of 10 because it is very good. Very good design. Very good spooky, like, whoa, I'm a ghost voice. He's very good. Motivation gets a 3 because it starts out good and then tanks immediately. And then Novelty will give another 10 out of 10 for, like, his use of the other wax puppets and everything like that. So, that brings the total up to 23 out of 30. Now, with all of that being said, who are the top five? Give me a second, because honestly, I don't know. I didn't calculate it before recording this, because I'm an idiot. All right, and so with that in mind, these are the top five. So, coming in at number five, we have the Wax Phantom. My man, last episode made a good first impression. He had 23 out of a possible 30. After, we have Charlie the Robot. Of course Charlie's here. Like, come on. Like, how couldn't he be? He's really good. He's a really solid villain. But who's above him? Who's above Charles? The ghost of Captain Cutler stealing yachts and, and <laughs> being in a diving suit. It's a, good, it's a good one. It's good. 24 out of a possible 30. And I, I put him above Charlie uh, because of the title card, actually. Uh, the unique title card really sells him to me. Then the top two, we have the ghost clown. For being a ghost clown, being a hypnotist, and being a creep. We like that. We like to see it here at the Scooby-Doo Fan Society. And then, number one, to no surprise to me, based on everything that I've talked about, is the ghost of Elias Kingston with 25 out of a possible 30. We're rotting people away with the passage of time. With all of that out of the way, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe, do all your YouTube sh shit. And, uh, yeah. I hope y'all have a good rest of your day. And yes, this is objective fact, and 